Welcome to Circle of Hearts Radio. Journey with Grandmother Alaya as she enters her magical world of relics, sacred sites, and ancient crystal skulls. Meet with exciting trailblazer authors and individuals shifting the consciousness of humanity. Send her your questions to be answered on air on her monthly segment, Ask the Oracle. And now your host, Grandmother Alaya, in the sanctuary on the airwaves on Own Times Radio. Welcome to the Circle of Hearts Radio. Welcome to my sanctuary. I'm Alaya, your host for this hour. In um, in this world, there's there's a few, there's many, many special people working in the background that you don't see plastic on um, major media, except for maybe own times, which is becoming very major media. And... Um, but you, you don't you won't see her on ABC News, etc. But maybe in the future you will. She's making a definite change in the world through heartfelt compassion for people in crisis. Now, I like for those that don't uh, know Nancy, I'd like to tell you a little bit about her. She's uh, she writes for Own Times Magazine. A lot of wonderful articles, and she is a published author, Return of Sophia, Mother of the Universe, and book two is The Mark of Genus, and there's also a third one coming out. Um, she has her uh, credentials are correct. I don't know. <laughs> Today, I'm Nancy has the academic credentials in psychology and cultural anthropology. Uh, now, Nancy, you have brought about this uh, new program called Heart Art. Uh, the new therapy empowerment program you have created. Is your book, The Return of Sophia, the Mother of the Universe, the base of this new program, Nancy? Yes, and thank you for having me on the program. Um, the uh, energy that came with the book is the basis of heart art exactly um you, you know you showed me something about this uh, what i like is because you approach there's people in crisis that you have been drawn to and you look at them and you teach them that the, they're as perfect as they can be but the we, they just need to rearrange their mindset a little bit. They need to understand energetically about themselves. Yeah, it's a rewiring of our brains uh, specifically for these people because they've been so oppressed and eliminated from society. So uh, it is definitely an awakening to a higher consciousness, to a higher self. Uh, a new human being is emerging on our planet. I know. Yeah, I noticed that um, when we were talking pre-show about ascension or transformation. Transformation has really a new meaning in in today's world. It's not so much. Um, we used to think of transforming the world changing ideas but now transformation has something to do about transforming ourselves becoming like you said rewired understanding how we can become empowered exactly so uh you deal with the lesbian <laughs> gay community. give the whole type like I said, I've been dealing with the flu, so Nancy's, you know, going to yeah. help me well, out here. Yeah, we call it LBGTQ, okay. and uh, yeah, and there's some other initials in there uh, as we go forward in this evolutional process. But uh, my work is with the trans community, and these are people that are within a, a chemical change. Uh, they have decided uh, to become. Uh, either, uh, you know, a male or female, some people born with both genitalia, some people born with issues where they don't, you know, have a specific chemical. And so um, these people 
after their transformation have had no support systems to land on. And because they were born in a time when a patriarchal religion was in control, they actually believed that they could not be gay or lesbian or trans or queer and be spiritual, which is not true. So that's the first old paradigm that has to pass away. We have to embrace these people and help them to understand that they have specific roles in society that were taken away from them centuries ago, so they have to step up. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I often often wonder with the people that you're working with. Now, I'll just limit it into the, the gay community. You know, there's a lot more involved. This is just an umbrella term I'm using today. Yes. Um, some, there seems to be um, a hierarchy. Yes. People, even within that own community, don't understand what some right. people are going through. Right, and they have been taught by an unfair, patriarchal, old religion that these people... Um, are um, different uh, and not acceptable and cannot be Christian. And therefore, uh, they have been targeted for ridicule. And instead of compassion and love in the hearts of someone who says, I'm a Christian, there's hatred and discrimination. Mm, So these people have had nowhere to go. And they are divinely created, just like we are divinely created. And I think mother of the universe. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to say, and I think that's what uh, people like you are bringing out to them that they are just fine as they are. I mean, take away all the outside criticism, take away all the religious prejudices. They are like a newborn. Yes in a new body and we are uh, we are witnessing it if people would open their eyes we say awakened if you looked around the percentage of people that are coming out of the closet we might say Mm -hmm. there's millions of people millions that have uh, an issue one way or another with the old paradigms and how they've been treated they are they're brand new people in brand new bodies uh, looking for a platform to land on. These are the people that before the church authority, before colonization, before the patriarchal authority, they were the medicine people, the elders, the teachers, the midwives, and even the witches who understood the plants and herbs and the medicinal purposes of the plants and herbs on our planet. They helped the people in need when they were sick or giving birth to a child. And what happened was all of this information was taken from them uh, and controlled by uh, that patriarchal authority, and they they were genocided. The witches Mm. were burned. The indigenous elders uh, were, you know, killed by the millions by the millions for uh, an authority to take over uh, and make an entire industry out of uh, the medicine plants, midwifing. Uh, You know, you can look um, at any uh, hospital across this uh, country and globally and see the benefits of plants and herbs. Well, where did they get all of that information? Of course they got it from those elders uh, that served in those roles. And most of those people were recognized as more than third gender. The Egyptian people say there may be as many as 13 genders. Wow. Yeah. I was going to say, what's interesting is it's all this newness Uh coming to us. I mean, even people are finally accepting the idea of the crystal children or the rainbow children. Or the diamond children. Or the diamond children. I mean, that's finally kind of seeding into the media and people are saying, okay. Yeah, and we can identify ourselves in our cosmic roles. In my new book, and we'll talk about that later, we can identify ourselves in our cosmic role uh, by the, the work that we do, our personality. Are we a light worker? Are we a star seed? Are we a diamond 
child, it's all identifiable why you're here, why you were reincarnated, and, and what assignment you chose. Yeah, um, I didn't mean to bring up that that quickly, but it popped in my head. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll talk about it. Yeah, no, the, the, the last portion, I wanted to talk about this, but it, it finally made sense. I'm, 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 talk, I'm thinking about, all right, rebirth. Ascension makes awareness, open minds, willing to change. Therefore, we transform. But we are transforming. And it, it takes people a long time. It even takes me a long time. I'm putting connections together. We aim to transform as light as our higher selves. But yet, we're so faceted. We... We simply don't get it. If we could step yeah. back and say, oh, our higher selves are in everybody, the crystal children, yeah. and the transgender, the, you know, all these communities were all the same. Yeah. And yeah. And it's in your last book, which we'll get to. <laughs> and is, when we, when we come to realize that we are not here to judge, it is not our role to judge be a pastor, a Sunday school teacher, or a, a mechanic. We have no right to judge. And when we open our heart, which is what heart art is, to that realization, and we start working from the heart instead of the head, mm -hmm. and we start accepting and embracing, it changes our lives. It changes the world because they're, we're embracing everyone you know we are not eliminating certain people uh, that have been designated for special privileges you know there are some religions that feel that there are certain people that can talk to god mm. certain people that are godly certain people that are christ-like that is not true no we, we are divinely are. created our dna is divine all of us yes sure and we're going to uh after this break, go into more about your new program, okay? Okay. <laughs> Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Dr. Kevin here, and I want to invite you every Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, to join me on The Dr. Kevin Show where we have a diversity of guests who help you step outside the box, behind the curtain, and see what a load of crap is going on in the world today. So you have more information with which to make better decisions. We'll see you there. Namaste. What if living didn't have to be so serious? What if you could move beyond your problems with greater confidence and ease than you've ever imagined? Throw your labels out the window and join the irreverent therapist for practical tips and a very different way of approaching the changes you would like to create. Marilyn Bradford and Pam Hodling have empowered hundreds of people to come out of self-judgment, quit looking to experts, and begin to create the lives they desire. Join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Irreverent Therapist Show. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Free your mind, expand your soul. Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Well, we're back with my friend Nancy, and we have a lot to talk about. Uh. <laughs> and I thought, and, and when we ended, I wanted to read this, uh, what I wrote about the third gender, if you don't mind. Sure, no problem. Yeah, this is in a part one of my book, The Third Gender. Our soul is celebrated, anticipated, and reincarnated into a new body 
one that brings with it thousands of years or more of lifetime experiences. There has always been a divine plan for our planet from the Creatress. This plan has always included the welfare of all sacred creation. Love has always been the keystone of this divine plan. Without judgment, humankind opened their hearts to this new ancient energy of love, and together we will recognize the sacred God and goddess within each of us. So truly the sacred masculine and feminine lives in us all. That is so, so, so true. I mean, this is, if you look on the internet, if you look at the many groups, we're all in our heads are saying, yes, this is what I want. But the the hearts aren't open. People don't realize the heart is the first part of understanding. That is where your true brain is. That's where your soul connection is. Now, please explain this program and where are you uh, teaching it? Okay, um, I'm teaching hard art once a month at Dr. Wolf's uh, Wellness Center, and you can find uh, me through her and also on my website, and I'll give those um, links. And then I'm once a week at uh, Women's Shelter in Kerrville, and also uh, you can find my work at www.lovedelight.weebly.com. I'm going to be teaching empowerment uh, programs uh, and uh, retreats, uh, and I'll, I'll have one in January that is specifically for police officers and CPS workers uh, to be reconnected, you know, burned out, disconnected, let's reconnect. So go to my website, which is the love to the light dot Weebly, and you'll see my schedule. Heart Art is a uh, program that explains to uh, you, to everyone, We are all the same. We are created the same. We are not separate uh, people in that you deserve more than I do or you're entitled to more than I I am or because you're gay, you don't have uh, resources. This program teaches empowerment, and it teaches you how to reconnect to your spiritual power, which gives you the opportunity to live an abundant life, slips you back into roles in society that you've been eliminated from because you felt like you were different than everybody else. We are not different. We are all the same. Mm -hmm. We have to be balanced within our heart, masculine and feminine, even gay, even transgender, you know, even heterosexual. There are people that do unkind things. Mm -hmm. There are people that do unspeakable things. And there are people that do good and honorable things. We we all fall into those categories. There's no such thing as gay people do unhonorable or heterosexual people are the best teachers or, uh, you know, transgenders can't be uh, leaders. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That is is a a smokescreen and a dark cloud that has been put over humanity by the patriarchal religions for centuries that you are not honorable or you're not entitled or you just cannot be because you're gay. That is not true. I think that um, somewhere in the dark ages, I think we lost it all uh, yeah. because all my, um, well, my background is with ancient history. Mm-hmm. Or even going back to you know the so-called Lemurian Atlantis, and there was acceptance, and then yeah. things start changing. Um, people start taking power away from other people, like you said. People started. Well, they saying, eliminated the feminine. They eliminated the goddess. They got rid of Sophia and Isis and Lilith and all of the great goddesses, why, why would you think that there are uh, all these uh, artifacts and cave drawings and ancient documents that show a woman, a woman's body, uh, her breast, her womb, her beautiful body? It's because we are the life givers. We were mm. primary. We are primary. But it, it was 
a effort by the patriarchal authorities to eliminate her power so they could have control. And if they have control, they have control in every aspect of your life, even birth control. You know, why would you think a church would be interested in birth control of women? Well, because they want you to have as many children as possible in order to build their church. Mm -hmm. They really don't care about you personally. It's build the church. And why would they want to attack uh, gay people or third gender people? Because those people are in the way of them controlling uh, medicinal plants and, and, and um, you know, those ancient teachings. Plus, uh, since they're, they were generally in the role of teacher and elder, they did not usually get married and have children. You know, they they had a higher assignment. You understand a higher calling, suppose. Uh, they yes, in the community, they served a very high position, and they were not always married and had children. So you know, the church decided, well, that didn't benefit the church if mm-hmm. we have people that are not going to have children. And so, my heart art is a it, it is a reminder of your power within and that you are perfect and beautiful. It does not matter. And forgive me, but I'm going to say it, who you're sleeping with. Hmm. That is just the lowest uh, concern that anybody should have about another human being. We should first be concerned about someone's, uh, you know, spiritual journey about someone that you know, we can uh, help, that we can assist, that we are brother and sister in love and compassion with. And who cares who you're sleeping with? I also saw that um, just you also include battered women in this yeah. mix that you're helping. Um, it, like I said, you, your specialty per se yeah. is uh, transgender. But you know, you're you're bringing forth a lot of others into the mix. Anybody well, that who needs... are battered women? Battered women are battered by men. Men that have lost their balance do not have the feminine energy in their heart, working from their mind, usually, you know, militarily building bullets, guns, and tanks, and have no regard or respect for the woman. Uh, you know, that, that is basically what it is. A battered woman is a woman that generally is being, uh, you know, uh, abused by a man. Uh, some of it's verbal, some of it's physical, and some of it's very extreme. And so the women that I work with that, uh, that I open up this program of heart art to for the first time in their lives, they hear from me, you are beautiful and perfect, and you do not have to live with a man who abuses you. Make a better choice. Also, was I seeing right that you also work with post-traumatic stress? Yes. Now, a lot of the people that, like I said, either in the military or the police office, now, there you're dealing with men. How does that work? Yeah. Well, generally, uh, people that are injured, you know, they're coming back from Iraq and uh, coming back from these war-torn communities. They've seen everything and they've had to do things that they really didn't want to do. It was almost beyond, uh, you know, their um, uh, capability and the things that they see and uh, the processes that they have to go to. And once they get out of that, they have to heal, and the only way they can heal is to bring the feminine back into their heart. And when the feminine returns, the mother puts their arms around that person and heals and nurtures and loves, just like a mother does. A mother picks their baby up and kisses and hugs. That's what a mother should do, love and compassion and, and feed the baby and make sure the baby has everything uh, for uh, abundant and successful lives. And this is exactly what these people need coming back from these war-torn uh, positions. They just need the feminine to return and um, you know, come away from all of the dark, the war, the bullets, you know, watching what happens to children and women in these uh, area and everything that's going on, you know, it, it's more than what they can bear. They can't sleep at night. 
that they see they play it over and over again in their mind so we have to stop playing it in our mind go to our heart uh, call in the feminine bring in the love and start working from our heart are the men responding to this i mean oh, yes, do you absolutely. find more and more coming towards you oh or? yes absolutely it's a balance and and once they're balanced again they're able to perform their roles again in society they're able to go back and, and go back to school and, and go back into their marriages which really suffer because of everything they've been through and it's the return of sophia it's the energy of Jesus. It's the same energy that, and you know, all the things that Jesus taught and the women that he loved. And we don't hear a lot about, except from the Gnostic uh, work, about who Jesus really was. The mm-hmm. first time that Jesus revealed who he was was at the woman at the well. And he said to her, I am the son of of God and he revealed to that woman and she went back to her village and she said you're never going to believe who I met at the well (laughs) yeah and then they all run down there and say who is this person and he loved his mother he loved Mary Uh, he always worked with the people you know Uh, he would go down to where the sick were that's that's a feminine energy that's not a masculine energy when you see the love and nurturing uh, that um, that Jesus uh, was so familiar with on this planet. So it's a feminine energy when you're working and nurturing and loving and supporting. Well, it's uh, what's before we go into the next break already. Oh, uh, and mine continue. What amazes me is people are so drawn to that loving energy yeah and we'll have to go back on that yeah we're sacredly divine (laughs) yeah we'll have to continue this on the next one yes Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business. And share your pictures with hashtags business done where and joy of business. Let's change the world with business. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. I'm Maggie Chula. And I'm Catherine Glass. And we're the Psychic Angel Channelers. Join us every week here on Ohm Times Radio for Angel Talk Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. The name is Bond, James Bond. No, the name is Joe, The Joe Show. And we are returning back for our ninth season here on Old Times Radio. So tune in every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, on OldTimes.com slash mobile. You can take us wherever you go. Yeah! Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. We're back with Nancy and continuing on the thought that we left on. I was just thinking, every major religion has a a, a central force, a, a creator god. By many different names, okay? And it's always people when they they reach toward it is where they have such feeling of love. 
Yeah. Yet, so many wars are fought because of religion. I mean, I'm not really trying to get into, you know, uh, the politics of religion. It, it just amazes me. Mm-hmm. If everybody feels uh, the the universal force mm-hmm. of love, yeah. no matter how you express it, whether it's Muslim, Catholic, you know, yeah. uh, Protestant, Jewish, anything. Yeah, they they want to keep it in this little control yeah. box. And this pertains how they, you know, they want to keep everything in their life a little control box, whatever. Instead of saying universal love, they say, well, if my religion says so-and-so is not good, then that person is no good. Right, right. And, and I, I, I want to interject here. This is um, words from Sophia. I did not write this. Uh, it's from The Thunder Perfect Mind. It's translated by George McRae. Here's what Sophia has said. These are her words. Okay. I was sent forth from the power which means she came from, uh, you know, the masculine. She's the feminine goddess. I, I was sent forth from the power. I have come to those who reflect upon me, and I have been found among those who seek after me. Look upon me, you who reflect upon me, and you who hear me, you who are waiting for me. Take me to yourselves, and do not banish me from your sight. And do not make your voice hate me, nor your hearing. Do not be ignorant of me anywhere or any time. Be on your guard. Do not be ignorant of me. And here's what she is called. From ancient times, she is known as Great Spirit, Mother, Father, God, Universal Mother Sophia, Mother of all creation, Pure Light, Holy Sacred Sophia, Life Creating Sophia, Queen of Heaven, Rising Dawn, Lily of the Valley, Lady of the Truth, Tree of Life, Divine Sophia, Mother of the Universe, Great Mother. Now, where did she go? I don't know. See, if (laughs) all of that is missing from society or, or church authority, you see where the darkness can come in? Yeah, it's just because uh, they say darkness try to, tries to overshadow the bright light. And when it can't um, dim that light, it tries to put a darker shield on it. And, right. it's, um, yeah. But it's breaking through. People are recognizing it more and more now. Yeah. So yes. That's the light. That's the light that is, has been missing. Uh, religion has failed, especially the LBTQ community. It has failed. It has failed many people in that it has become a dark patriarchal religion without the love of the feminine. Sophia is missing from all of that. In, in a lot of churches, you can't even be a, a preacher or a leader unless you're a man. And that's true. I'm Catholic, and that's uh, <laughs> I love the Pope, but it's yeah, very do. true. Francis is is he's uh, beautiful. I hope he can change because he does realize something better change if it if they want to you know uh, remain a religious power. Something has to change. But when you remove the feminine, the love and the compassion, the only thing that you have left is discipline and authority. Because that's mm-hmm. what the male energy is. Male energy is discipline and authority, which without the feminine becomes tanks, bullets, wars, continual uh, oppression. It also, uh, if we look, step back and look, um, the male was always to balance the female. The male was always to challenge the female energy. If a the female energy is nurturing, soft. Mm-hmm. The male energy was challenging. And sometimes our greatest teachers is the male energy because mm-hmm. now we're learning to, okay, this thing, this is all balanced. We need to bring back the feminine. Exactly. So, And that's true they, of everyone. Yeah. Even transgender, even gay heterosexual, whoever, it's true. You have to be balanced. If you're not balanced, 
with masculine and feminine. You're too strong one way or flip-flop the other, you know. Uh, You'll have someone that is a strong disciplinarian but can't love. Right, right. And I think this is the the whole thing, that um, you being able to talk freely to people and saying... Let's put this. In, let's put the cards on the table. You know, let's get them on the kitchen table here and talk about it. Right. It's, we are spiritual. We are spiritual, divinely created. We cannot just not be that. You have to find your connection. It doesn't matter whether it's a church or a tree. You right. have to know who you are, and you must be divinely created and know that connection because that's what we are. You, you cannot go through life. You struggle, and you search for that connection. And on your deathbed, some people find it. On their deathbed, some people will say, I surrender. Right. And, and there's always that path. There's always that opportunity because we have been divinely created to operate that way. That's the way we were created by Sophia and those heavenly energies. We have to we have to search. We have to know who we are. We have to be balanced and we have to be aligned and reconnected. Or we wander. We don't know who we are. We can be manipulated. We suffer. You know, we get disease in our bodies because we're not aligned with our spiritual connection. We miss the point of being here in this assignment. That's true because we, I think, um, at least in the new age community, you know, you know, it's accepted that we keep our soul keeps on coming back to learn. This is an earth school, yes, and we keep coming back to learn lessons. Maybe we come back sometimes as female to experience what it's like to be nurturing. Sometimes we come back as male. To experience the other, you know, the other exactly. part. Exactly. So, but right now, the ultimate of the, if you want to graduate, the earth school or ascension or transformation is yes. to become balanced. Yes, the biggest, the, 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 that's the key. Because if you don't, uh, if you're not aware of that and you struggle and you do not surrender and you have hate in your heart towards another human, you are actually wasting your time on this planet. You, you, you cannot be a helpmate. You cannot be Christ-like if you don't surrender to the idea that we are all the same. That's, that's really true. That's, that's the graduation. <laughs> we are all the same, and we need to support each other. And, and you know, if nothing else, if you just show your love, and your compassion, and instead of a judgment, uh, you know, you'll lighten up. Your body will be lighter. You have a newer, lighter body because you're not carrying all that stuff anymore. It's not your job. Your no. body becomes that new, lighter body when you surrender to the key. The key is love. And that's, like I said, we have a few minutes before the next break. But what I want to point out is those that are listening, that when you go seeking, you know, for people to help, be, you know, go and have your heart open, who you're drawn, be discerning. Just because somebody says, well, I'm going to help you or I'm going to change you. Yeah. It doesn't work. Right. I, you know, Nancy, like I said, I admire her so much. But, you know, she has programs and it's becoming her type of work is expanding into, you know, many different hospitals and whatever. That's why I said she might not be on ABC News right now, but who knows in the future she might be as someone that has created something that works for now. Check out her websites. Yeah. And she can, you know, direct you. If you can't get to her personally, you know, the Internet opens doors. So I want to, you know, definitely stress that again before we go into, you know, the next discussion about her new book. Because um, there are good people out there, but, you know, be discerning. 
We're trying to show you there is help out there. You know, uh, don't walk into a, a huge conference and say, okay, I'm there, I'm great, I feel energized, I'm going to do it, and then walk out the door and say, I don't feel any different, I'm still lost. Yeah. So, <laughs> Well, I, every one of us has uh, a mission. Every one of us make a difference. If you save one butterfly, you've made a difference. But can you imagine saving one person? Can you yeah. imagine the joy that will flood your, your life and your heart when you know that you have helped a person to achieve a better life, uh, to achieve uh, an alignment, to, to rise above depression? The lowest energy the human can express is suicide. That's the lowest energy that you can go. But just above that is depression. We have people that operate... Um, you know, with depression and just could slip down into that lower energy at any time. You know, if you just smiled at somebody, if you just said, you're, you're so beautiful, uh, you know, is there anything I can do to help you? Bring them up just a little bit, and I guarantee you their inner power uh, will um, express. Uh, th they will be able to understand that they have the power to come even up above higher than that to joy. And what's the highest thing that you can, how can you, the highest vibration a human being can have is love. And as, no, I was going to say, and you don't, oh, I, this is tricky. Opening the, your heart, I think, yeah. is the most natural way of um, healing. Yes. You know, I know sometimes some people may need certain things. I, I don't. That's why I said this is tricky. I don't want to say, you know, I'll get rid of stuff. But I think you can take stuff, but you really need to open to your heart. All right, we're going to be coming back and talking about her, uh, Nancy's new book, in a moment. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. The truth is, you can't change the world if you're broke. I know. I tried. Isn't it time you turned your life's calling into a profitable, freedom-based business? I'm Michelle Barr. Join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for Sacred Success. Join Elliot Jolish, the business therapist, each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jolish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers live on air every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jolish Hour. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. We're back with Nancy, and this time we're going to concentrate on her new book coming out. But I want you to sit back, open your minds, and realize we're moving from ascension to the point of transformation, which is a personal lesson. Now, I think, Nancy, you really hit 
on the nose with this other book of, as you say, it was an assignment in the social school. Um, we're back. We're here to learn. And in order to graduate, we have to transform ourselves. So can you go more into this, uh, into the new book that you have? Yeah. Um, the new book is, is a guide. Um, once the um, trans and LBGTQ people have made their transition and they have found their voice, they need support. Uh, so we are all uh, light workers, star seeds, uh, diamond children, crystal. We all come uh, with assignments. We are reincarnated here, and we have chosen to be here at this time. And it's important to find out, you know, who you are, and you can do that by identifying your cosmic role based on your life work and your personality. So we find out, uh, my book speaks of, um, this process of determining uh, who you are, why you're here, uh, and basically, and many times as I work with people, I find that if you just discover what you love, I, I love whales, uh, you know, uh, I, I love um, a- an ocean, uh, you will find that you're drawn uh, to your assignment by what you love. It's not you know, uh, a mystery about how to find out why you're here. I'm a light worker and I'm a star seed. I was born in 1949 and I came in with a new wave of feminists, the feminist movement. Uh, you know, you might remember Gloria Steinem and, mm-hmm. and that group. Our, our first assignment was to protest the Vietnam War. And um, as a light worker, I realized in my personality that I have never conformed. Uh, we were labeled hippies and flower children by, you know, the patriotic authorities. And so, you know, that's how they ridiculed us in the 60s and 70s. But uh, there are millions of people that were born during that time that are light workers. They're, they're the guardians on the planet. They were the first to arrive with the feminine energy. We came because uh, humanity called for the feminine energy to return. That's why we're here, because we were ready to make the transition. I'm also a star seed, and star seeds, uh, our primary purpose is to assist all the guardians uh, in this new era based on love and compassion, uh, to remind of the feminine energy, and we are here to facilitate to facilitate the change and the awareness to the higher self in the human species for the good of humanity. Uh, how do you know you're a star seed? Well, for those people who are constantly looking at the stars and they feel they don't belong here, that might be a clue. Uh, I explain in the book that the difference between star seeds and other guardians is that star seeds will not reincarnate. They will not come back to this planet after this assignment is finished because it has been with great suffering that they are here and separated from their star home planet. So because of the suffering, they will not have to come again. But most of the rest of us will continue to reincarnate into different positions. Like you said earlier, some of us will come as men, some of us will come as women, some of us will come as trans, and so forth. I was going to say, now I know why uh, you and I get along. We're both the same 1949ers. (laughs) Are you really? Oh, that's great. Yeah, Yeah. well, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I do. That's why I'm saying, oh, I didn't know that. No wonder why we get along so well. (laughs) See, it's in our DNA. We came here with this assignment. It's our personality. We can't help it. (laughs) <laughs> you can put us in a different skin and make us crazy, but you know if you if you look back at your life, that's exactly you, not conformed, uh, labeled oh, a hippie, yeah. flower child, protesting yeah. the Vietnam War, yeah. you know. And almost... here we are at this age. Uh, we are now uh, in a position of guider, of uh, awareness, of um, uh, to lead to the new era. It's so. A... No, go ahead. I was, uh, yeah. Most people, I think they sometimes, if we were in a different century, they would call us wisdom keepers. Yeah. Yeah. See, we would be doing everything, and who knows? We might have been one of these, uh, one of the, uh, why we so understand them, the transgender <laughs> in another yeah. lifetime. <laughs> 
I mean, it's, there's all possibilities. Maybe that's yeah. you know. And, and the children that are born, the diamond children, the crystal children, they have a new imprint. They're different. They're smarter. They oh, know yeah. a lot of things. I mean, they're three years old and they sit down and, and play Mozart on the piano. Uh, they're talented. They're beyond understanding. We, we just don't know where they get this knowledge. A 12-year-old that speaks before the UN perfectly articulating her thoughts. You know, these are children that are born with a new implant. And we are to support those children. We are to look to those children for guidance. That's These are the guardians that are here working on the planet. So I talk a whole lot in my book uh, about those roles. Uh, those With those roles and us identifying to those roles, we are the new species. We will change this planet. And it's all about the return of the feminine. That's what has begun this transformation in humanity. There's a lot of work for people to do because, like I said, we have the new children coming in, but we need to get rid of our messed up minds so that yeah. we can support the children. They they can't fight everything themselves. They, they need support to bring... Um, the potential, the planet to the potential that it can be. So it's really up to all these, you know, foundational steps that we're taking and that Nancy is yes. talking about need to be yes. addressed. And as soon as the mainstream religions uh, get in tune, as soon as they realize the power is sacred and divine and and they get off worrying about who's sleeping with who and get on the real issues of starving children and the sex trafficking and abuse of women and all of these issues uh you know children that don't have mental health children that don't have uh you know, uh, eyeglasses and shoes and food and all of the things that benefit humanity and stop that other, see, they're, they're sidetracked with that stuff. That, mm. that doesn't, that is not why we're here. Why we, we are here to support and make this a paradise. Right. And no I, child should go to bed hungry. No child should go to, to school uh, with, uh, you know, without proper clothing and shoes or even not even have appropriate education. That, that's just ridiculous. It's insanity. It's insanity when millions of people are more focused on uh, same-sex marriage and, and, the, and the battle uh, on the national media than starving children coming on boats from Syria. I know. That's, uh, when people's hearts are opened, they're opening, but... Like you say, it's the paradigm of pe- people are, are f- afraid to connect to something different. Yeah, they can't step out. That's all they know. It's changing. It's, it, it is. Uh, if you look at even OM Times Magazine and how powerful it's become lately, and uh, you know the numbers are just growing and tripling uh, every quarter, uh, people are looking in. What's going on? You know, what's not working and what will work? Yeah, and that's why I think that the creators of Ohm Times, you know, the, this is their vision to get people to think and to provide answers. And there's so many diversity of answers whether it's on the radio or the podcast or the written articles, yes. choose what links with you at the moment. There's no rights, no wrongs. Just open your mind and start someplace. Yes, and, and you're exactly right. And that someplace is the heart. Right. It's the heart. The mind chatters. Uh, it makes mischief. It can be manipulated. It can be lied to. It can run like a movie for 85 years. You can run the same old mean movie up there. But the minute you start operating out of your heart, it's different. And the thing is, don't be afraid to ask or to question. Nancy's very available. When you look at the promos, her links are there. Look at her website. You'll find more links. She, she's out there. Ask me questions. Look at the, the thing on own times. The, you know, let me know what you want. 
if you ask, we can provide the information that maybe you need. You know, this is all heart-centered. That's why my brand is Circle of Hearts. Yes. I appreciate you so much and the work you do. Absolutely. Well, I really very, you know, I'm thrilled to have you as a friend and a, a colleague, as a light worker and a star seed. Thank you. <laughs> it's did. a new phenomena. It's a time of, of unprecedented evolution of humankind, and we are in the middle of it. Yeah. You know, I don't think of it. You always follow your heart. I follow my heart. And it's about time everybody gets on that bandwagon. Can't hurt you, right? Right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Now, so look into um, Nancy's books. It's www.lovetothelight.weebly.com. Nancy.oaks one at aol.com or om times om times magazine uh you can find a lot of light workers and and uh guardians uh within the magazine uh astrology articles that are just amazing mm. aren't those articles fascinating i know i constantly every time she puts out uh one of the weekly magazines i'm like oh i need to see that <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Yoga and health recipes and better living and um, taking better care of ourselves and those around us. Well, thank you, Nancy. And um, we'll have you back next year. Not that All far right. away. Love you. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.